So let's begin with a heading preparation of alkene. And we'll want to take this opportunity to, as I told you, get started with a new reaction mechanism, which is elimination, dehydration of alcohol. So preparation of alkene, a method like dehydration of alcohol, which is very popularly called acid catalyzed, acid catalyzed. See, I'm emphasizing upon acid catalyzed because generally an elimination reaction you get to know is using a base. So for a change in dehydration of alcohol, you'll use an acid. Let's call it acid catalyzed. And chances are by now, something like CH3, CH2OH, concentrated H2SO4, 170 degrees Celsius, you know, sulfuric acid is the dehydrating agent, CH2 double bond, CH2, is about ethanol losing water, alcohol losing water, forming an alkene. And naturally, the reverse of this would be seen as a property of alkene and preparation of alcohol. So removing water from alcohol, dehydration would give you an alkene. And adding water to an alkene, this time maybe you'll be using dilute sulfuric acid at a lower temperature. So these are these are temperatures which are printed in most popular books. You're supposed to replicate the same in the question paper. In the long run, it could be as simple as propanol H plus delta. Now H plus delta would mean you are looking to dehydrate it, and propanol will give you propene. And naturally, the reverse of this, which will look like H plus H2O, this is dehydration and this is hydration. Basically, something which I tell you during isomerism, way back I tell you, the general formula of alcohol, what is the general formula of alcohol? CNH2N plus 2O, if this is an alcohol, empirical formula, general formula of an alcohol, naturally you remove H2O, you remove H2O, you'll get something like CNH2N, and you add H2O to CNH2N, you'll get CNH2N plus 2O. So alcohol, alcohol, losing water, producing an alkene, or alkene, taking up water, getting hydrated, to an alcohol would be very routine things right now. Dehydration, hydration are again terms which you relate to. CNH2 and plus 2O is the general formula of an alcohol. All right, so very much from the empirical formula and things like this, which you would have seen before class 11 dehydration of ethanol giving you ethene, dehydration of propanol giving you propene. Concentrated sulfuric acid would play two roles. One, it would be acting catalytic. We have already started calling it acid catalyzed. Two, you know it's a good dehydrating agent as well. Now let's come to the mechanism part. Let's come to the mechanism part. I told you the mechanism is peculiar in the sense general elimination is carried out using a base. Here you will find acid being instrumental. So please tell me if I can remove this clutter. Maybe the heading portion and get you started with the mechanism. I think you have noted down this particular stuff. And in mechanism, in mechanism, see, I've told you, mechanism is going to be like the grammar of this language. You don't understand the grammar of a language and you never make headway into it. So only if you understand the mechanism, you're good at making and breaking of bonds, you know, with the proper arrowheads. Life in organic chemistry would be, you know, simple, fun. And from day one, you'll want to start doing this. See, an OH group, H plus, this is how it's going to begin. The lone pair would coordinate with H plus. So I'll not be skipping any step to begin with. Right now, you know, I'll be giving you all these steps. Alcohol, acidic medium, this lone pair will coordinate with H plus. Naturally, it will result in something like this. Oxygen with a positive charge, 
and you know all of this is towards losing water water is a very stable compound goes without saying 75% of the planet is water what makes water a very good living process certainly stability water is extremely stable so dehydration is one of the common reactions now naturally water would go as a neutral molecule and if it goes as a neutral molecule it will take this bond along see when you draw the arrow heads now you get the clear picture when you draw the arrow heads you get the clear picture naturally oh oxygen was neutral here h plus ke saath mein oxygen ka teen haath ho gaya positive ho gaya water will go as a neutral stuff ye uthke aise jayega so naturally agar ye bond leke jayega the intermediate will be a carbocation yes or no and this carbocationic intermediate this carbocationic intermediate would lose h plus it would lose h plus it would lose h plus now yet again i have told you every time i remove h plus every time i remove h plus every time i remove h plus i let it go without the pair of electrons so i always broken it this way and naturally this bond would come here so that this positive charge is neutralized and this is how this is how you get propene this is how you get propene naturally if it begins with h plus and ends with loss of h plus we realize the role, the, the role of h plus is catalytic the role of h plus is catalytic yes or no by now i would have told you by now i would have told you between an anion and a neutral species and anion is a stronger base so between oh minus and h2 i would have told you oh minus is a stronger base and basicity is inversely proportional to leaving tendency i hope you are understanding me in any case something neutral would be more stable but again between oh minus and water i tell you the cation is more acidic and the anion is more basic compared to the neutral species or the neutral compound a cation is more acidic and an anion is more basic so if oh minus is more basic naturally water is a better leaving group although in principle the stability of water makes it a very good leaving group and you see the acidic medium is required the acidic medium is required to convert this oh to water convert this oh to water so dehydration dehydration the number of steps i have told you i think it's pretty pretty comprehensive nothing very fancy or you know new or difficult to understand although i'm going to repeat this you need to be doing it from day one and only if you are very particular about it only if you do it clinically right the journey in organic chemistry would be very smooth from day one get used to it making and breaking of bonds how charges are developed and you know how the bonds are being broken and made <laughs> h plus is to story chalu hota hai because we want water as the leaving group h plus nikal jata hai so naturally the role of h plus is catalytic only and you call it acid catalyst maybe the same thing if done in butane 2 ol the same thing if done in butane 2 ol and now this is what i'll be doing i'll be adding h plus and removing water right away so i'll be skipping one step main ek step kha jaunga Every time you see an OH, I did tell you in the past OH is an acid sensitive group. I told you about elimination happening in OH. Remember, Clemens and Wolf Kirchner was talking about how OH is an acid sensitive group. Here, I will take one step. I will add for a given alcohol minus water. H plus add water. Water is left, and right away I would want to talk about the carbocation. Now, here you know. There are two possibilities. There are two possibilities. You'll get butyl one e as well as butyl two e. Let me call it product A and product B. Some of you would already know which is more stable, A or B. B is more more stable. B is more stable because it has more alkyl groups, more alpha hydrogen, more hyperconjugative hydrogen. this is something which will want to respond 
this is something which is want to respond in general b is more substituted stability of alkene and end up telling you all of it butuanine butuin butuin is more stable because it's di substituted are ha na bolo and when you are doing it for the first time when you are doing it for the first time you will want to check for these two hydrogen atoms in general it will belong to the class of beta elimination you know dehydration or other elimination reactions which will be commonly encountered will be cases of beta elimination what is beta elimination beta elimination is going to bear a picture like this you'll have a leaving group you'll have a leaving group say a leaving group in this case it's water and if it's attached to this carbon let's call it alpha carbon now this is the beta carbon this is another beta carbon yes or no so beta elimination would mean there would be loss of leaving group and a beta hydrogen a beta hydrogen now in the previous case in the previous case you had both beta carbon identical so a pi bond to the left to right would have meant the same here naturally i hope you understand why i call it call it beta elimination isko alpha beta elimination bhi bolte hain one two elimination bhi bolte hain but the new terminology is you call it beta elimination you call it beta elimination i'll give you an example of alpha elimination when the time is right but the general elimination is beta elimination i repeat it's also called alpha beta elimination it's also called one two elimination i hope you're understanding me bachche log ha na bolo so i would be skipping this step every time mai is tarah dalunga water nikalunga i have come to know the intermediate carbocation i have come to know the intermediate carbocation and butuanine and butuene would be two possibilities in two different molecules where either this hydrogen a or hydrogen b is lost so you know this going this way would give you a this going this way would give you b naturally b is major a is minor b is major a is minor because b is more substituted b is more substituted b is more substituted between a and b b is more substituted means it is di substituted will have two sources of alpha hydrogen so this with three alpha hydrogen here three alpha hydrogen here you know this will have six alpha hydrogen i'm talking about hyper conjugation you need to be good at hyper conjugation and hyper conjugative hydrogen to understand this naturally a which is mono substituted will have only two such alpha hydrogen so more alpha hydrogen more alpha hydrogen is cited as the most common reason of stability of alkene more alpha hydrogen with more hyper conjugative hydrogen is how you go about you know narrating the stability of alkene so b is more stable than a b is more stable than a and if b is more stable than a something like b something like b something like b would happen in more number of molecules than a you are understanding me a happening in some molecules would give you product a b happening in some molecules will give you product b in this full exam you don't need to be so elaborate no textbook is going to give you a picture like a and b producing two different compounds a and b i do it deliberately so that from day one you know the picture is very clear you understand a and b are going to happen in two different molecules and if b produces a more stable product this means b is going to happen predominantly more molecules will take a path b and product b would be the major product something major is given which is formed in more yield So I have discussed a few things out uh, here, you know, like role of acids is catalytic. We keep on, you know, talking about acid catalyzed because in general we see that uh, elimination is carried out by a base. Here, acid would be making OH minus a better leaving group, which is involving water. Is that cause? I was just missing. I think you are understanding me. And loss of water would give you a carbocation. so a few a few things about carbocations which we are going to learn first time in, in the class today i'm keeping it simple butuanine butuene this is basic school stuff they tell you butuene is stable butuene is major and there is a very popular law a popular rule 
you know, something you'll want to know for your school exam. But before that, I think I've been able to explain why this part of beta elimination. In general, an elimination would be like a leaving group, which is say water here, and hydrogen lost on the beta carbon. So here you have two beta carbon, one giving you butyl one in, another giving you butyl two in. And please tell me if you know the rule I'm talking about, what is the rule which is Stegjeff rule. Stegjeff rule. First of all, there is a small little confusion between the way it should be spelled. Some books would write it Stegjeff rule, some books would write it Zetsev rule. I would go with, you know, the majority Indian textbooks. Stegjeff rule. Somebody will want to narrate it to me, please go ahead. What does the rule tell you? The rule states that? Yes, please. Yes, please. You would have known a little bit of it. And that's not exactly the language of such this rule. What you are telling is the real thing. The more substituted alkene is the major product. But the rule, the way it's printed in the textbook, and it states like, uh, anyone? Every time you have a choice, like you have out here. Carbon having lesser hydrogen. Carbon having lesser hydrogen. Loses hydrogen to produce the major alkene, to produce the major alkene. So naturally we are talking about the two beta carbon and the one having lesser hydrogen would lose hydrogen to produce the major alkene. There is a common adage called poor becomes poorer, poor becomes poorer. And all of this I keep on saying is like a necessary evil. It's a necessary evil which I have to perform because you'll find these terms in your textbook. So many times you'll be expected to explain this in this particular language for your school board exam. So poor becomes poorer or carbon having lesser hydrogen, losing hydrogen and giving you the corresponding set just product. Is eventually about producing a more substituted alkene only. Hey, if it is CH3 and if it is CH2, Naturally, the carbon having lesser hydrogen would be the carbon having more branches. So if this has three hydrogen and if this has two hydrogen, naturally it's a two degree carbon compared to a one degree carbon. And if you remove hydrogen from a two degree carbon, you'll get a more substituted alkene. Yes or no? Yes or no? So, you know, this is like, uh, again, a necessary evil we have to perform. School period, board period, you have to language that you have to do. Amir carbon, Garib carbon, the Garib carbon of the hydrogen, this is a major product. You know, for the sake of it, I'll give you two, three examples where this rule will come handy. And very quickly, I'm going to speak a lot about how unwanted this rule is. But before I, I, I tell you how unwanted it is, Let's see a few cases, you know, where this would be like proving its worth would look all right. And you would then naturally want to know a little bit of it before discarding it altogether. Guess we can move on. Are we there? So, it's not that you have to show it in school, you have to show it in school, H A, H B, and you possibility A, possibility B, giving you product A and product B. But I think you have been understanding me so far. A more stable alkene will come out of a process, you know, where eventually hydrogen would appear to be lost from a carbon which is having lesser hydrogen and so many times called as the poor carbon. We'll want to move on. Can I remove this letter? We can move on. <laughs> I 
I can rip it off. So anywhere you have a doubt, you can ask me. If you don't ask anything, I'll naturally take it as a compliment. And we have a lot of justice to cover. But hello. So after butane to all, you know, I would be taking a few cases where naturally I'll be playing around. I'll be playing around cases having different types of beta carbon. So this time, if I've given you a compound which say could be called a 4-methyl uh, or a 2-methyl pentane 3 ole and H plus H plus delta now can give me an alkyl like this or an alkyl like this. Yet again, I can call it A, I can call it B. Well, copying down, you know, you can quickly tell me between A and B, which is more stable? So this is di substituted. This is di substituted. I had explained this to you. It's, it's not very quickly. It's not very quickly. This is the minimum which you want to have for an alkene. Then you go on with one alkyl group, then a two alkyl group, then three alkyl group, and then four alkyl group. I do tell you this in hyperconjugation. And this is non substituted, having no alpha hydrogen, three alpha hydrogen, six alpha hydrogen, nine alpha hydrogen. And you call it mono substituted and di substituted because you have an alkyl group from this end, two ends, three ends. Yes or no? So does B look like a di-substituted and A look like a tri-substituted alkene to you or not? Huh? And which is, which is likely to have more alpha hydrogen? Di-substituted or tri-substituted? I, I can again remove this. This will be the least stable. That will be the most stable. Hyperconjugation has gone past this. So tri is substituted, di is substituted, final answer, which is, which is major? A. And A is major, and this could be explained again using the number of alpha hydrogen. How many alpha hydrogen in A? Certainly. People don't respond to this, and God knows what's running in their mind. You choose not to respond to this, a and how many alpha hydrogen in B? So I could see three here and one here. So you understand this being tri substituted will have more avenues, more sources of alpha hydrogen. A would be major, B would be minor, A would certainly again be called the set just product because this is in accordance with set just rule. Here you have this beta, which is CH2 and this beta which is CH, here are 8 hydrogen and here are 2 hydrogen. So certainly a garib carbon, poor carbon, having lesser hydrogen, this is losing hydrogen to give you the major product. And naturally when I talk about the mechanism, I'll add H plus, I'll remove water, I'll give you, here I have to understand my problem here. I write away, start with, the carbocation and between possibility A and possibility B, I would want A to happen in more number of molecules and mature to the major product. Yes or no? Okay, but hello. The more number of times you draw it, the more number of times you make and break bonds, you know, the more comfortable you are likely to be with all of it. Anything which is bothering you? So I'm going to explain it on both fronts. Something which is involving set just rule. And then the bigger picture is the stability of the alkene we are 
hydrogen locks from a carbon having lesser hydrogen would give you a more substituted alkene. You are also good at finding the number of alpha hydrogen and comparing the stability on the count of hyperconjugative hydrogen. And trust me, we need to go much, much past, much, much uh, higher than this. If you're happy with this, the same stuff, the same stuff which may be, the same stuff may be with rings. So if it, if it had been just a cyclohexanol, I would have had just one product. A pi bond to the left or right would mean the same. But suppose if I put a methyl here, you understand that deliberately, to discriminate between this beta carbon, which is CH2, and this beta carbon, which is CH. And now, you'll have two possibilities yet again. You'll have two possibilities yet again. between say A and B, which do you guess is major? Which is major? A is major? Again, because that would look tri-substituted and that would look? Di-substituted? Yes or no? It's going to explain, it's going to explain or it's going to abide by this adjust rule as well. <laughs> but you know, H plus dalne ka, water nikalne ka, get the corresponding carbocation, and other have been doing H A, H B, this time I think this is H A and this is H B. And if this happens, if this happens, you'll have product A. And naturally, if this happens, you'll have product B. Yes or no? You'll work according to your convenience. All you have to do is understand it's beta hydrogen loss every time. And you'll want to write it down. You'll want to write it down. Do it quickly. Even if you understood it inside out. Initially, you do it a few times. You go back home, you practice it one more time. If this gives you more stable alkene because of more alpha hydrogen, more substitution, naturally A will happen in more number of molecules and A would be the major product. Now you can tell me between A and B, A is major because it has more alpha hydrogen. It's tri-substituted. And what is the count of alpha hydrogen here? <laughs> So you have two here, two here, three here, so this with seven alpha hydrogen. And here in this case you have two plus one, three alpha hydrogen. Set this product, yes or no? You're taking A and B. In due course, you know, you get very instinctive with things. You've done your job all right. In due course, you know, it would be about just looking at it and realizing. Please go ahead, tell me in this case. And this is not something beyond your reach. This is not very spectacular. This is not very fancy. Basic aptitude. If you are struggling to find which is major here, you will complain only to yourself. If you have been hearing me out, 
I can make this understand to you know a class tenth grade student or even junior than that. Something you know which is very obvious by now. See, go ahead. I want everyone to give me the right answer. A and B, which is major. And when you don't speak, I again wonder what's running in your head. B is major. So यहाँ पे थोड़ा जगह छोड़ दो, यहाँ पे थोड़ा जगह छोड़ दो, ये घर पे करना. यहाँ पे जगह छोड़ दो, थोड़ा घर पे करना. Alpha, beta, alpha, beta, CH3, CH2. Naturally, you are the CH2. This is supposed to be the carbon having lesser hydrogen and would give you the major product. But चलो घर ना बोलो. You're all happy with this? You're all happy with this? Okay, a little bit off. So if you leave some space in the notebook, you can try it at home. I can rub it off. Copy that and stop. Now, a few cases this would look a little different from the ordinary. Say, tell you, you have a structure like this, and this is where you know it's very important to get used to bond and line form very quickly. Imagine the time which will be wasted if I start writing carbon hydrogen everywhere. And from the very look of it, from the very look of it, you realize that यहाँ पर beta है, hydrogen है, यहाँ पर तो hydrogen है ही नहीं. Yes or no? And the only possibility, the only possibility would be an alkene like this. Yes or no? Along with this, you'll have an alkene like this, and along with this, you'll have an alkene like this. So you have three products here. You have three products here, and see if you can predict out of A, B, C, which will be formed in maximum yield. Now B looks the most substituted. Again, you know something as simple as it looks. I wonder what it takes to answer to a question like this. You know what's running in your mind when you're choosing not to answer this. You know somebody from the very look of it would see this is di substituted, this is tetra substituted, this is mono substituted. So obviously, which would look the most stable and would look the major? Please go ahead. B. And it won't come out of any suggest. It will not come out of any carbon having lesser hydrogen, losing hydrogen thing. Please hear me out. If it's again going to begin with H plus added water loss, I think you're all happy with this. I think you're all happy with this. But चलो हाँ ना बोलो. Now this is something which I'm going to repeat multiple times. All of class eleven and twelve, and this would be like a trait of carbocation. Every time the mechanism is via carbocation, every time the mechanism is via carbocation, every time the mechanism is via carbocation, you will want to know this. This is called a molecular rearrangement. Yes, please. 
इट्स कॉल्ड अ मॉलिकुलर रियरेंजमेंट यस इज मिथाइल शेप यस एंड दिस मिथाइल शेप इज जोन टू बिकम अ वेरी कॉमन रूटीन मॉलिकुलर रियरेंजमेंट वेर इफ यू कैन कन्वर्ट अ लेस स्टेबल कार्बोकटाइन टू अ मोर स्टेबल कार्बोकटाइन बाय से शिफ्टिंग अ मिथाइल ग्रुप दिस एंटायर मिथाइल ग्रुप and yet again you will see i would have cut it from here and moved it in a manner such that it moves as cf3 minus it moves as cf3 minus this is a very popular molecular rearrangement it will be called 1 2 methyl shift and do you understand if a cf3 minus goes there simple a cf3 minus positive ko aap neutralize kar dega and will have the positive landing on this carbon yes or no Yes or no? And I wonder if it's simple as you can see, two degree becoming a three degree is about producing a more stable carbocation, getting a more stable carbocation. So this would make sense, you know. This would make sense. CH three minus shifting from this carbon to this carbon would be like converting a two degree to a more stable three degree carbocation. But you know, how now, bro? I mean, this would not be in your school scheme of things. This might not be there in NCERT most of the times, but something which is very, very routine, very common, basic molecular rearrangement. Every time you have branching next to a positive charge, every time you have branching next to a positive charge, you can have something like a hydride shift or a methyl shift. This would be a trait of carbocation, and now certainly. With this positive here, with this positive here, I think you can deduce. I mean, all that would mean the same, just for your convenience. I would want to put the pi bond here because that would look a little simpler. Why is it called one two? It's called one two because it will always happen between adjacent molecules. It's called one two because it will happen only between. Adjacent carbon. I'm sorry. It will happen only between adjacent carbon. ये पास पास के carbon में होगा one three नहीं होगा और दूर होने से positive नहीं होता. And what's driving this rearrangement? Naturally, the formation of a more stable carbocation. We all know three degree is more stable than two degree. And thereafter, suppose I call it H B loss of this. I report as a possibility B. And say I call this H C and loss of this. I believe as a possibility C, and A naturally would have come from the first carbocation, which uh, we have been doing so far. Now naturally, eventually, A would be the least. It would be formed in traces. B and C, B would be major. Naturally, this would be called as tetra-substituted H two L alpha hydrogen. C would be minor. So neither the major nor the minor is coming from the so-called Sedgers rule. So Sedgers rule will have its limitation. Sedgers rule, I keep on saying, is for some very poor learners of the subject who would not want to even know the mechanism. Which is I told you a big, big compromise. You can't make headway in organic chemistry if you don't do the uh, making and breaking of bonds and the proper arrowheads. There would be a little inertia in the beginning, but trust me, very rewarding. A point ki baat mein you see a molecule like this, and the first thing which will come to your mind is methyl shift, and a product like this would be the major product. You're getting me. Are you all understanding me? So let's just copy it. Look, give it a look. Let's see this. It's bothering you.
बच्चे लोग सॉरी मिथाइल स्विफ्ट होता लेफ्ट से भी हो सकता था राइट से भी हो सकता था मल्टीपल केसेस होता बट इन ऑर्गेनिक ऑल पॉसिबिलिटीज को एग्जिस्ट मेजर माइनस रेशियो आई थिंक यू आर हैप्पी विद मी एंड दिस विल नॉट बी एक्सप्लेन यूजिंग ओनली फॉर जस्ट रूल यस और नो इफ यू आर हैप्पी विद दिस इफ यू आर हैप्पी विद दिस आई कैन रिपीट ऑफ विल वांट टू रिस्पोंड विद सम कन्विक्शन इफ यू आर हैप्पी विद दिस सो आई गिव यू अ कपल ऑफ केसेस टू ट्राई ऑफ योर ओन I would be interested to see if you're able to draw the arrowheads properly or not. Exactly what I did in open chain right now. So we'll want to do it. Maybe in a ring where say you have to explain this as the major product. Let's keep it simple. Explain only the major one. All right. So we'll want to carry out something like methyl shift in open chain now in the ring. And uh, again, a peculiar case. See if you can explain this to me as well. A five-carbon chain with an OH exocyclic and suddenly becoming a six-membered ring. I tell you, this, these are very popular cases. I'll give you say five minutes to try it of your own. We'll have to explain how it's happening. So whatever I have been doing right from the beginning of the class, you know, now you'll want to give the arrowheads. You'll want to add H plus, remove water from the carbocation, and don't give me all possibilities. Just give me the major product. Just give me the major product. Give it a thought. See if you're able to arrive at these results by adding H plus and removing H plus. in the first and the last step respectively so I'll give you 5 minutes to you know give it a give it a try so you know let's uh, quickly see the way we are going to propose a mechanism in these two cases so yet again i would want to skip a step Like adding H plus and removing water, producing a carbocation in one step, and then as I told you, I see the opportunity of converting a less stable carbocation two degree to a more stable carbocation three degree by say having the CH three move along with its pair of electrons to this carbon. I I am allowed to do this because it's happening between adjacent carbon. I'll call this one two CH three minus six. And yet again, the driving force is getting a more stable carbocation. I think you are understanding me. And in the in the beginning, first few classes, you will want to draw all the arrowheads. You know very clearly. I would want you to write this hydrogen and remove this H plus, and You know, mention about the loss of H plus, like you did mention one to methyl shift a molecular rearrangement here. To arrive at the final product, this would look again a little different because a five-membered ring will become a six-membered ring. I mean, under normal conditions, maybe you know you could only think about a carbocation and the corresponding alkene being an exocyclic pi bond with a five-membered ring. Now, this would be minor. This would be minor. And the major product would be a six-member ring out of again what I call as a very very common molecular rearrangement associated with carbocations. This is understood, I believe. We'll have a positive charge on this carbon, and every time there's a positive next to, every time there's a positive next to, every time there's a positive next to a ring. You will want this to happen in the textbook. They are going to show it this way, and I am particularly impressed with the way you have drawn it, Ritisha. You know, because this is how I also try to explain people for the first time that either you will want to understand it right away, 
as a five member drink becoming a six member or initially you will want to break this bond 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 when you break this bond and take this electrons here a negative positive and you will want to join these two carbon so that the negative and positive are neutralized it will become a six member ring so right away an arrowhead like this would mean this bond is shifting from this carbon to this carbon i hope the previous one is very well understood Two degree to three degree, a more stable carbocation is what is driving this one two methyl shift. And from here, you'll want to remove this hydrogen to get the major product. I'm not talking about the minor product in this particular case. Sorry. So if we're done with the first one, you know, I'll just want to remove the clutter, maybe show this with a little more space. I'll want to give you a bigger view. I can have it off. So now, you know, talking only about the carbocation, which is preceding the final alkene, or the carbocation, which is the intermediate here, although I've made it look very clearly, that a five-membered ring will become a six-membered ring. This is like one, two. So for this to happen, again, the positive star needs to reside exactly on the carbon next to the ring. One carbon will increase. Four, six, five, will go. Five, six, six will go. You will want to call it ring expansion. You will want to call it ring expansion. A bigger ring is going to be more stable. I'm going to talk about it. A bigger ring is going to be more stable. I'm going to talk about it. And maybe only for the sake of giving you. A bigger and a clearer view. This is what I am up to, and this will lose hydrogen in the last step. This is ring expansion. This is ring expansion, and the objective of the ring expansion is that a bigger ring is more stable. Six member ring is going to be the most stable. Six member ring is going to be the most stable. Parallelly. You could have contemplated a hydride shift here as well. It's minus. I'm sorry. You could have contemplated a hydride shift, which would have given you a three degree carbocation, and maybe resulted in loss of hydrogen from here, or loss of hydrogen from here. Yet again, I would call it possibility B, possibility C. In this case, this will become C, and this will become B. <coughs> this naturally is A, giving you product A. And then from this hydride shift, from this hydride shift, I could have expected possibility B giving me product B, possibility C giving me product C. This is major. This minor, I would rather want to call it in traces. B would be minor. A, B, and C will have a relative yield of A more than B more than C, but A would be the minor, big, would be the major product by a big margin. Yes or no? Ring expansion, ring expansion would happen in more number of molecules than hydride shift. Even though giving you three degree carbocation, a bigger ring is going to be of. More stability. So there could be a variety of questions, you know. I think you're understanding me. A very routine thing. Ring expansion. A five-member ring will become a six-member ring. I could always break this bond. I'm just giving you another view of the fact. I could break it like this, make it negative, make it positive, and this negative and positive could be added like this. Instead of simply, you know, drawing it this way, I could have done this, and this would again be negative, positive, neutralize the six-member ring and the positive residing on the carbon, which is a part of a six-member ring. So naturally, you do it a couple of times at your home. And 
इट बिकम्स अ रूटीन थिंग मेरे को लगता है हमको मेरा बात समझ में आ रहा है ए बी सी सब समझ में आ रहा है नेचुरली ए इज कमिंग फ्रॉम एज ट्रांस एंड बी इज एन सी इज कमिंग फ्रॉम हाइड्राइट से ए इज गोइंग टू बी प्रोसीडेड बाय अ कार्बोगोट एंड लाइक दिस बी एंड सी वुड कम आउट ऑफ अ कार्बोगोट एंड लाइक दिस बोथ आर टाइप्स ऑफ मॉलिक्यूलर रीअरेंजमेंट एसोसिएटेड विद कार्बोगोट एंड एसिड कैटलाइज डिहाइड्रेशन एंड सर्टेनली यहां पे सेट जस्ट शुरू कोई काम में नहीं आएगा विल हैव टू इवेंटली गो बाय द intermediate which is carbocation and here and the stability of intermediate finally leading to a more stable alkene as the major product fair enough we can move on and as i told you in due course all of it should look very natural all of it should look very natural only if you allow me i want to remove this clutter If you understand the major product here, this has been coming in the entrance exams since a few decades. Before you people were born, 25 years ago, the J.E. paper me asked a question. Aata tha. School me nahi padega ga, normal kitab me NCERT me nahi rahega, syllabus me nahi hoga maybe, but entrance exam is a very common thing. A five-membered ring will become a six-membered ring. Ring expansion is going to be a very common. molecular rearrangement every time there is a carbocationic intermediate and let me give you a little complicated version of the same this would be a very relevant question under the current scenario and what you learn as a first hand ring expansion where naturally for this to happen you want oh and this there thereby a positive charge on the carbon next to a ring you do it three times here you do it three times here you remove three hydrogen here and though it's going to look a little complicated to begin with agar ye samajh mein aane lag jata hai this would be like the first step of learning you will want to have the same understanding here ये पॉजिटिव आएगा मे बी स्ट्रिंग के बाद ये पॉजिटिव आएगा स्ट्रिंग के बाद एंड यू नो यू वांट दिस टू हैपन थ्री टाइम्स ठीक है यू कैन मूव क्लॉकवाइज और एंटी क्लॉकवाइज व्हाट एवर एंड इवेंचुअली गेट अ प्रोडक्ट लाइक दिस फॉर ऑल फोर मेंबर रिंग्स वुड एक्सपैंड टू फाइव मेंबर रिंग्स Happening three times, three pi bond, and it would become aromatic as well. Yes or no? So you want to give it a try? You just check up someone. As soon as I'll be helping you. Plus, you realize you don't have to really do it in the real exam. All you have to do is find an option like this. Believe that the expansion would be the molecular rearrangement happening here. Yes or no? ठीक है डरने का नहीं आराम आराम से सीखने का जो पहले ही आराम से सीखता है रेडी स्पैंड करता है ट्रस्ट में जिस दिन देखने यू विल बी एबल टू यू नो डू ऑल ऑफ इट वेरी ग्रेसफुली एंड एट सम पॉइंट स्टार्ट प्रेडिक्टिंग द पॉसिबल मैकेनिज्म ओनली इफ यू फॉलो माय इंस्ट्रक्शंस एंड यू नो आर वेरी पर्टिकुलर अबाउट ड्राइंग द एरो हेड्स and you know making and breaking of bonds the way i have been telling you only those you know who take it casually and god know some people even advocate ki utna mechanism nahi padhna chahiye if you don't go it 
with the mechanism and you don't sit down with a pen and paper and you're not scribbling everything and you know you're being very particular about how the charges are getting developed and neutralized, how you know a four member ring is becoming a five member ring. And why is it of very significance that you want a positive next to the ring only because very much like a one two hydride shift, it can only move by one carbon. So this ring expansion also needs to be happening between adjacent carbon atoms. I told you ring expansion is going to be predominating something like a methyl shift. You see another case of hydride shift in some cases, I'll talk about hydride shift, which is like uh, methyl shift on some other day. You know it's why carbocation, you know it's why carbocation. I've told you about a few cases of molecular rearrangement, but simple as it looks, it's definitely via carbocation. And if 3 degree more than 2 degree, more than 1 degree happens to be the stability of carbocation. I might have told you if the intermediate is more stable, if the intermediate is more stable, the journey is smoother, the compound is more reactive. If 3 degree more than 2 degree more than 1 degree is the order of stability of carbocation, naturally the same would be the so called reactivity of alcohols say towards dehydration or you'll want to call it the ease of dehydration, the rate of dehydration, 3 degree more than 2 degree more than 1 degree. Hello. Full moment. How many are you going to do it? So, who are you going to do it? Okay, you're going to do it. You're हाँ हेलो तो नंबर से थोड़ी होगा तुम पहले नहीं बात करने से नहीं होगा तुम पहले यहाँ पर आओ प्रियो का क्या हो ना कोई इतना नाम से आओ हम तुमको सारा डॉक्यूमेंट दे देंगे नहीं वो तो मंडे जाने एक बार आओ ठीक है आओ ना आराम से एक फुल पकाने क्लास में मेरा साथ बैठेगा I have another class after this. So I'm not going to ask you to stay till 7 p.m. I can't commit that crime. I want the people to see tomorrow as well. Okay. Three degree more than two degree more than one degree is the ease of dehydration of alcohol. Rate of dehydration, reactivity of alcohols towards reactivity. And you all understand it could be a 3 degree, 2 degree, 3, 1 degree like this. Or naturally, a 3 degree, 2 degree, 1 degree like this. But chalo, hana bolo. <clears throat> hmm. If suppose... I give you an alcohol like this and I give you an alcohol like this and I give you an alcohol like this. Can I, can I propose that this would be again the ease or rate of dehydration? Please have a look and comment. And explain three alcohols. 
Can I say this would be the ease of dehydration? See, when I start a method of preparation of alkene, naturally I would cover the spectrum. So, you know, I wanted to teach it in more details. Obviously, we'll add more layers of understanding, but... Steve, this understood? The last compound will form benzene. Very true. So, in the last compound, there's a pi bond coming in. C H plus H2O happening throughout. Here you'll have, say, cyclohexene. At the cyclohexene, don't you think it's going to be more stable than... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. This diene is going to be more stable than cyclohexene because, you know, where you have resonance, conjugation, double single double. And this would be very, very stable. This would be very, very stable because naturally this would become aromatic. So, so many times you would see the stability of corresponding product would also decide the reactivity of the reactant. And think, I think you're understanding me, you're taking a note of everything. The theory which I tell you is always keeping the questions in mind. We'll want to move on. 3 degree more than 2 degree more than 1 degree, 3 degree more than 2 degree more than 1 degree. And every time a more stable alkene is formed, the corresponding alcohol will dehydrate more readily. Yes or no? Ye dehydrate karega, cyclohexene dega, ye conjugate time dega, or wo cyclohexa 1,3,5 prime dega, which is better known as benzene. But chalo. Another statement, another statement. Another statement which you want to know like anything. There's also going to be a very important statement. It's going to be a very important statement. I'll be making use of it in all of organic chemistry to follow. A beta hydroxy carbonyl, a beta hydroxy carbonyl, a beta hydroxy carbonyl will dehydrate very readily. Maybe without sulfuric acid at a lower temperature, without sulfuric acid at a lower temperature, can I call it a beta hydroxy carbonyl? I have taken over to the substituent because naturally CHO will have higher priority in nomenclature. So beta hydroxy carbonyl or beta hydroxy aldehyde in this case. And I propose this will lose water only on heating, only on heating, only on heating. There's going to be a compound which is going to have a particular name as well. Although I end up telling it much later in class 12. That particular compound, CHC, CH double bond, CHC double bond OH, CHO, is going to be called proton aldehyde. But it's not only about this particular compound. It's about any compound which is the dehydration product of a beta hydroxy carbonyl. So you might very well have an OH here, a double bond over here. You'll want to see that the beta hydroxy carbonyl.
आगे बढ़ते हैं आगे बढ़ते हैं आई वॉन्ट टू डू लिटिल बिट ऑफ केमिकल इक्विडियम इन दी ऑनलाइन मोड तो बिस यू ऑल यू नो ग्री आई माइट टेक एन ऑनलाइन क्लास टूमारो आई लेट यू नो एट दैट क्लास जनरली यू नो आई टेक दी ऑनलाइन क्लास प्रेटी लेट मंडे विल बी बेटर ऑल राइट विल टॉक अबाउट इट So every time you have a beta hydroxy carbonyl, I had the choice of taking the pi bond to the right or to the left. I deliberately chose one as the major product, and the major product is going to be a beta hydroxy carbonyl, a beta hydroxy alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. The product is always going to be an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. It's always going to be an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. Yes or no? Do you see a reason why they are dehydrating very readily? Obviously, and you know you want to start picking it up. You want to start picking it up very quickly now. Double single double double single double, and this double single double conjugation would be you know pretty pretty consequential because this double bond is here. Here, permanent effect is. This normal diene is not like this. Cyclo diene is not like this. Or you get a diene is not like this. Double bond is always polarized in this manner. So this resonance will be very very you know active. So beta hydroxy carbonyl, beta hydroxy carbonyl. You know, it's always good to know the name of uh, the compound chemical name to begin with, and then whenever it's given in the real exam, out of A, B, C, and D, you will want to identify one of the beta hydroxy carbonyl. In class twelve, I am going to talk about a very very popular reaction called aldol condensation, and you will find this of application there. A beta hydroxy carbonyl will readily dehydrate even without sulfuric acid, only on heating to produce an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. Which are very stable because of conjugation or resonance. Yes or no? Along with all these acid catalyzed cases of dehydration of alcohol, another reaction which we we'll want to take up sooner than later is dehydrohalogenation of dehydrohalogenation of halides. Now, dehydrohalogenation of halides would be like. CH3, CH2, Cl, Br, I, with alcoholic NaOH or KOH, alcoholic NaOH or KOH, producing CH2 double bond CH2 plus KCl plus water. You know about this before class eleven. Aqueous KOH will give you an alcohol. Alcoholic KOH will give you an alkene. I can rub it off, and yet again, every time you know it's not going to be written in form of carbon and hydrogen. So many times, it would be expressed as sorry, as chloride or bromide. Yes or no? I have told you a bit about this OH minus acting as a base here, removing hydrogen. Possibility A, possibility B. Naturally, they will look like again cases of beta elimination. OH minus will be instrumental in removing this hydrogen. A or B will happen in two different molecules, but result in product A and product B. Very much like you had in butane. Two butanol, butane two will produce in butane one and butane two e. Here again, possibility A and B will happen in two different molecules. Naturally, P will B will happen predominantly because B is more stable. And so many times you are happy calling it sexier product. So we'll take up this and elimination in details in the upcoming classes. Go through all methods of preparing alkene and alkyne. Maybe next year you know, I would relate. Preparation of alkene with preparation of alkyne. Go through all methods of preparation of alkene and alkyne. 
some prepared in the classroom. I told you in organic chemistry, next two, three classes will be hydrocarbons only. I want to finish it off. And at the next opportunity, I would take an online class where we'll take a chemical equilibrium. So this much for the time being. Stay happy, stay healthy. I'm not giving you any homework in particular because you have to, you know, do a lot of theory from a textbook, which I repeated all of alkene and alkyne for the upcoming classes. Milte bache lo. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.